Hi there, I am Sujata, founder of Grace USMLE Tutoring. I partnered with Achievable to create a comprehensive USMLE Step 1 course for medical students. It combines my years of USMLE tutoring experience with Achievable's powerful software. To learn more and gain access to a free trial, visit achievable.me. Hello everyone, I'm Sujata. I'm the founder of Grace USMLE and USMLE author at Achievable. In this video, I would like to discuss the mechanism of action of antibiotics. Antibiotics may be bacteriostatic or bactericidal. Bactericidal antibiotics are able to kill the bacteria and they are used in very specific situations like endocarditis, life-threatening infections, and infections in immunocompromised host. On the other hand, bacteriostatic antibiotics are able to inhibit the growth of bacteria without killing them. According to their mechanism of action, antibiotics can be classified into six classes. These are antibiotics acting on the cell wall, antibiotics acting on the cell membrane, bacterial protein synthesis inhibitors, messenger RNA synthesis inhibitors, antibiotics affecting DNA replication, and antibiotics interfering with folic acid metabolism. Cell wall synthesis inhibitors include the beta-lactam antibiotics like penicillin and cephalosporins, and also vancomycin, cycloserine, and bacitracin. Penicillin and cephalosporins have the same mechanism of action. There is a component in the cell wall of bacteria which is called as D-alanine, D-alanine. This component normally binds to a protein called as penicillin binding protein. There are various types of penicillin binding proteins. Penicillins and cephalosporins have a beta-lactam ring which mimics this D-alanine, D-alanine. The beta-lactam ring of penicillin and cephalosporins binds to the penicillin binding proteins which inhibits the synthesis of peptidoglycan in the cell wall of bacteria. Not only that, penicillin also inhibits the function of transpeptidases and thus inhibits cross-linking of the bacterial cell wall. Some patients may develop severe allergic reactions to penicillin. Some of them may have anaphylaxis. Cephalosporins and penicillins share a cross-reactivity of about 1 to 5% for severe allergic reactions. Glycopeptides like vancomycin and ticoplanin, they directly bind to the D-alanine, D-alanine portion of the bacterial cell wall. And in this way, they inhibit peptidoglycan synthesis in bacterial cell wall. Carbapenems like imipenem, meropenem, etc. inhibit cell wall synthesis by binding to the penicillin binding proteins. Monobactams like astrionum also inhibit cell wall synthesis in bacteria. Antibiotics that are active on the bacterial cell membrane include polymyxins and daptomycin. Polymyxin B and polymyxin E, which is cholestin, they bind to the outer membrane polysaccharides and then disrupt the outer membrane acting as cationic detergents. Cholestin also has anti-endotoxin activity since it binds to and inhibits the activity of lipid A. Daptomycin is a lipopeptide antibiotic. It attaches itself to the cell membrane of bacteria and then it punches holes causing leakage of ions from the outer membrane which causes cell death. Antibiotics that inhibit bacterial protein synthesis are further grouped as 30S ribosomal subunit inhibitors and 50S ribosomal subunit inhibitors. Aminoglycosides and tetracyclines act on the 30S ribosomal subunit and they can be remembered by the mnemonic AT30 or AT30. The antibiotics that act at the 50S ribosomal subunit are chloramphenicol, linquazamides, 
macrolides, streptogramins, and linozolid, and they can be remembered by the mnemonic clumsy line at 50. Aminoglycosides inhibit protein synthesis by causing premature termination of mRNA translation by binding near the A site on the 30S ribosome. Aminoglycosides act synergistically with penicillins, which lies the cell wall, allowing the aminoglycoside to enter the cell and inhibit the ribosomes. Tetracyclines and glycylcyclines like digicycline prevent binding of transfer RNA to the A site. Chloramphenicol binds to and inhibits the 23S ribosomal subunit of the 50S ribosome. Thus, it inhibits peptidyl transferase activity. It also inhibits the binding of tRNA to the A site. Macrolides like erythromycin, lincozamides like clindamycin, and streptogramins like quinipristin and dalfopristin inhibit protein synthesis by causing premature detachment of the incomplete peptide chain. Linozolid prevents the formation of the initiation complex for protein synthesis. Quinolones are bactericidal drugs which inhibit DNA replication. They include ofloxacin, norfloxacin, ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, etc. Quinolones inhibit DNA replication by inhibiting the enzyme topoisomerase 4, also called as DNA gyrase in bacteria. It interferes with strand cutting and resealing function of the enzyme. Antibiotics that interfere with folic acid metabolism include sulfonamides and trimethoprim. They inhibit distinct steps in the pathway leading to folic acid and tetrahydrofolate synthesis. Sulfonamides are structural analogs of paraminobenzoic acid, which is a substrate for the enzyme dihydroteroate synthase. Sulfonamides competitively inhibit this enzyme and thus inhibit DNA synthesis. Trimethoprim inhibits the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase, which converts dihydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate. This step is in a later stage in folic acid synthesis. mRNA synthesis inhibitors include rifampin and rifabutin. Both of these antibiotics inhibit the enzyme bacterial RNA polymerase. For more details on indications and adverse effects of antibiotics, please refer to Achievable Weave Assembly online textbook. Hope you liked today's video. Thank you.